Welcome to another edition of Let's Argue, where I hop online, I accept your hot takes, unpopular opinions, and tough questions. I respond to the best ones in videos like these. Uh, let's, let's go! go! AirPods look stupid. I don't know, I don't really think they look any better or any worse than most earbuds, just because they're wireless doesn't really make a difference to me. I think some people wear them in a really wacky way where they're like upside down or some crap, and that looks really dumb. Uh, but most of the time I just avoid earbuds because, I mean, they're not really all that good for your ears anyway if you're playing them at a super high volume, uh, which you can sort of accidentally do a lot easier than if you're listening on headphones, but I just find them to be really uncomfortable uh, after long periods of time, so I'm just like, screw it, I have no interest. Nardwar is actually the busiest music nerd. I don't know about that, guys. I mean, you know me, I'm always online, always engaging with you, always hitting you with another piece of content, always recording another, another piece of content. Nardwar, I mean, he's out here, he puts in the work, he does his thing, but most times we don't even know where that guy is. We don't even know what he's doing, all right? I need proof of scheduling. If we are truly to have a busiest versus busiest music nerd battle, because hey, I'm not, I'm not doubting Nardwar's talents, you know, but whenever he's not on camera, hey, you know, maybe he's like, paying somebody else to do all the research and he's just like sipping daiquiris and spinning dead Kennedy's records and you know just like chilling and hanging out you know meanwhile I'm over here grinding you know holding down that busiest title and and that's me don't don't doubt my busyness James Blake working with hip-hop artists like Metro Boomin and Travis Scott shows how hip-hop is bleeding into almost every genre James Blake uh, was already like doing some songwriting for Beyonce and, and I know that's not hip-hop music but still worked with Beyonce and he's worked with the RZA as well so this is not anything entirely new and the reason I would argue that is because James has always been a smart guy who's been ahead of the curve and in even the wider scope of the genre's history it's not like hip-hop hasn't been crossing over into other genres too I mean rappers guesting on pop songs is nothing entirely new. I mean, you think of the great rock rap crossovers of the 80s, like Public Enemy and Anthrax and Run DMC and uh, frickin' uh, Aerosmith. Aerosmith blows. I don't wanna close my eyes. I don't wanna fall asleep cause I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss the pain And ever when I dream of you The sweetest dream will never do Cause I miss you, man And I don't want to miss the pain 21 Savage has grown to be the most successful person out of his XXL freshman class. I don't know, that's kind of a tough sell because 2016 was actually not that bad of a freshman class. I mean, okay, yeah, you do have 21 Savage on there, but you also had Denzel Curry, you also had Anderson Pack. Kodak Black and Little Uzi Vert are arguably still really relevant to this day, so... I don't know, I mean, 21 Savage, he's certainly seeing a high point right now. His new record is doing really well. He's putting out some really good tracks, but honestly, I feel like the future of him and the future of some of the other artists who were in that 2016 freshman class, it's still kind of up in the air. How can rock be dead when Annie Clark is alive? You know, inadvertently, this kind of illustrates the point that I was trying to make in my recent video on the Fantano channel about rock being dead, because yeah, it's kind of preposterous to assert that the genre is actually dead and gone because you still have great artists that are sort of in the underground or at that mid-tier of popularity. Hey, they're not topping the charts, but they're still coming out with great stuff. They still have an audience. People still care about what they do. And in fact, in my opinion, artistically speaking, most of the underground and mid-tier stuff is, is really what matters the most. It's where most of the innovation goes on, it's where most of the great ideas that end up bubbling to the top come from. I mean, in my opinion, all that rock is really missing right now are those shitty billboard topping bands like Nickelback and Creed that nobody can really stand anyway, so what is the genre really missing at this point? Yeah, it's not at the top of the charts, but if the genre has to pump out another with arms wide open in order to get there, who gives a shit? Calchuchesta is an industry plant. Do you think you're an industry plant? It's Kel Chester here. Make sure that you're 
on the phone when you leave a message and leave a message after the beep. Beep. Got you. That, that wasn't the real beep. Okay, here's the real beep. Thank you. Punk actually did go crunk. Yeah, I mean, it did. This was during an era in the genre, like really during like this MySpace era where I was truly tuned out to most of punk music. I mean, while I did grow up listening to a lot of the stuff, um, it was mostly the pop punk that was popular at the time. And then a lot of the more old school shit when I was in high school, I had kind of become a punk purist in a way and wasn't really listening to any punk music that kind of came out past like the 90s, uh, outside of like maybe a, a few bands uh, that were a bit more DIY or underground and, and that sort of thing. Compilations like this, as much as I did enjoy some crunk records uh, around the time that, that this uh, compilation probably dropped, uh, this I would have completely avoided and most likely would have thrown up at the sight of uh, had it been anywhere in my vicinity. Be the Cowboy is equal in quality to Hounds of Love. No, it's not. No, it is not. No, it isn't. No. Stop. Stop it. Granted, Mitski is a talented singer-songwriter. She has my respect. I think that she's been getting a lot of well-deserved accolades off of her latest full-length LP. But to assert that that record, that Be the Cowboy, is on the level of Hounds of Love, which, in my opinion, is, is a record that not many modern albums approach, much less Be the Cowboy. Be the Cowboy is not alone in, in not being able to approach Hounds of Love. There are certainly other records that have uh, a further distance to travel uh, when being on that quality level of Hounds of Love, but Jesus. The only reason why This Is America was your number one single is because you're so left wing. This is also why Ye Versus The People was in your worst singles, top 10 worst singles pre-silly it's bias this is america in my opinion is a great track it has great production it has a fun flow it's incredibly catchy and yeah you can boil the song down to its social or political sentiment but it actually kind of holds up and makes sense we do have issues with gun violence in this country childish gambino is only really expressing a, a nod to reality by addressing it in a song. Meanwhile, on Ye Versus the People, the production is nowhere near as impressive or dynamic. It's clearly cobbled together, even if it does have a little bit of a left field appeal. The chemistry between Ye and T.I. is awkward as hell, and there's really not much to the song structurally, lyrically, instrumentally, so you really can't glean anything all that entertaining from it, in my opinion, outside of the message that Ye is trying to get across, and the message is garbage. Which frankly doesn't even really have to do with the politics of what Kanye's saying because it's not that political of a song. It's not like Kanye's hopping on the mic and saying, yo, trickle down economics is life. He's not coming on the mic and rapping about immigration or foreign policy or anything like that. Maybe in a weird way you might find it interesting as another chapter in the ongoing saga of Kanye's self, his mental struggles, his trials and tribulations, his antics, but even from that perspective, I don't really find the track all that compelling. Nor have Kanye's past fiascos really been a selling point for me anyway. At the end of the day, it's always really been Kanye's music that has drawn me to him. Uh, all the crazy media stuff and the meta commentary has, has never really been one of the biggest selling points for me. It's always been about whether or not a verse is compelling, is an instrumental compelling, is the song good? Which for the most part, you don't really have to worry about all that much with Kanye. He does have way more hits than misses in his discography. But Ye versus the People is just one instance, in my opinion, of a miss, and that's really it. You're the Simon Cowell of hip hop. Well, you know what? Simon Cowell is a pretty popular, successful guy, even if people do see him as kind of an asshole, because he says it like it is, at least from his own perspective. You don't gotta agree. Maybe he's a little harsh, but you know, he, he says how he really feels and he's not afraid what people think of it. If I gotta be that guy, I be that guy. And, and I don't care, I'll be that guy. All right, it might lose me a few friends, some people might look at me a funny way like, oh, that's the fucking guy who thinks that record's not all that good. Ugh. You know, some people might look at me that way, but I don't know. I'm doing what I like to do. It's a small price to pay. All new music is just filler music until Jai Paul makes a return, AKA until never. 
That's never going to happen. It's probably never going to happen. I hate to break it to you. Hey, you know, if it happens, I'll be the first one there to be like, Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Jai Paul record, but it, until that point, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be like this. It's easier to make unsettling noise music, i.e. daughters, death grips, etc., than it is to make actually appealing music i.e. KSG Kendrick. Whether or not music is unsettling noise or appealing is completely dependent on who's listening to it. I mean, not only are there people these days who would tell you that hip hop music is just crap and it's just noise, but I mean, if you took Kendrick's Two Pimp a Butterfly back to the year, I don't know, 1805, most people probably wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. This tweet also makes me think back to the Rite of Spring Riot, which was a performance of a classical music composition that was so avant-garde and unsettling and noisy for its time that it literally caused the audience of the performance to have a riot. And honestly, I, I doubt that there's any amount of, of noise or cacophony that any musician could create today that would really make the audience want to do such a thing. And mostly because the threshold of what excruciating or boundary pushing noise is, is always changing from generation to generation to generation to generation. So being able to keep up with that and think of new ideas to keep noise on the threshold of creativity does require artists to actually be perceptive, forward-thinking, and talented. I think as forward-thinking, perceptive, and talented as it may require an artist to make a hip-hop or a pop record that's on the cutting edge too. I see no reason to disregard noise music over real music. It, it just sounds airheaded, just like a really airheaded assertion. You might as well be having a conversation about, well, rock music and genres that make you play real instruments are harder than genres that you just play with computers. Brock is the best member of Brock Hampton. I disagree. Uh, I actually think it's Hampton. Hampton has way more talent in comparison with Brock. Uh, Hampton has way more dynamic flows. Uh, Hampton's actually the one always producing all the best beats in Brock Hampton. Uh, can actually sing and dance as well. Uh, Brock really only is kind of a one trick pony. I mean, I get the appeal of Brock, I see the appeal. But the thing is, it's kind of shallow. I feel like at the end of the day, Hampton is what's really bringing a lot of uh, the goods to the table, bringing the milkshake to the yard. If not for Hampton sort of playing that effective, supportive role there, Brock wouldn't have a, a foundation to stand on. So I think Hampton is really kind of the unsung hero of Brock Hampton at the end of the day. You need to go back and redux your Care For Me review. I have no interest in doing so. I think Saba's a talented guy, but there's not really a whole lot about that LP conceptually and, and production-wise too that really surprises me or really makes me want to go back to it. Uh, I'm not gonna review a record over again uh, just to say something nice about it that I don't really feel. Uh, that would be doing me and you and the artists a disservice. I, however, do think he is, uh, again, if I haven't said it, a talented guy, and I am looking forward to what he drops in the future, and um, I'm just going to be keeping tabs on him. So, you know, he's he's in the listening rotation. That's all I can really say right now. You have to give JPEG Mafia's next project a 10 because he won the quiz in your interview with him. Well, I don't, I don't remember definitively saying whether or not he won the quiz or anything, so... Uh, you, you know, um, well, uh, well, well, uh, hey, look, another, uh, question. I hate music, especially songs and albums. Well, do you hate compilations? I don't think so. You haven't, uh, illustrated EPs over here either, so, um, <laughs> maybe you just really like compilations and EPs. Um, or maybe you really like, uh, iTunes previews, you know, you really like that that 30 second snippet, you know, to really just kind of give you a taste, that 30 to 90 second snippet of a song to uh, really give you a, a rough idea of what you're listening to. Um, I, I don't know what I'm grabbing at with responding to this. This is, this is preposterous. If you don't like music, then go do something else. Play a video game or watch a movie. But hey, good luck doing that without hearing any music. You're gonna have to turn the mute button on with everything you do because music's everywhere, man. There's no escape in it. Music's in every facet of art, culture, and life. You're not getting away from it ever. Music's gonna be with you till the day that you die. And that's it. That's the, the latest episode of Let's Argue, everyone. Thank you for, for watching. I hope you had a fun one on this one. Um, yeah, I, I love you. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. 
Anthony Fantano, let's argue forever.